Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about how to help free yourself from anxiety. This is a bit of a general overview or a reminder of the things that we need to do to help ourselves clear our anxiety and free ourselves up once again. Anxiety and worry can take over big parts of your life if you allow it to. I know this personally, and I'm not talking about just being worried about something or just even having an anxiety about something. I'm talking about having anxiety, about being down the wormhole, about having anxiety and worry and panic take over and let it be a huge part of your life, even if no one else in your life knows about it. It can be something we're very secretive about because we can look good on the outside. This is something that we carry very deep inside ourselves. And so we can let it take over. The anxiety and worries of our life can take over if we are not cautious and taking good care of ourselves. Constant stress and worry can actually physically make us sick. And anyone who has had a panic attack knows that the anxiety and the worry and the stress in life can actually become physical. It can come out in all kinds of physical manifestations, whether it's your heart racing, your breath getting shorter and faster. It can come out in sweating and many different um, physical ways that I don't even need to remind you of because we have talked about that here many, many different times. And I want to talk about the good news is that there are ways that we can help to alleviate the stress in our lives and remind ourselves that we can come back to our parasympathetic nervous system versus being stuck in the stress mode, the fight or flight mode, which is the sympathetic nervous system. So the first step is that we can kind of look at our lives and see where our additional stress may be coming from. Now, many things are triggered in uh, having a panic attack or being in anxiety. Things are uh, triggered often from our subconscious, but we want to take a moment here to look and see what in our current lives we are stressing about. And you want to ask yourself a very important question. Is this something I can change? Is this something I have no control over? Right? That is a determining factor in how we are going to proceed or how we're going to respond. So is this something I can change? We can just leave it at that. If the answer is yes, we can go one way. If the answer is no, if we cannot change what is happening, we will proceed in a different manner. And this can help us by determining whether we have control over what is happening. We can now find ways to overcome this stress. Is the root of your stress something that you can change or not? For example, if you're feeling anxious about your career or losing your job, you have the capability to change this worry. You have the capability to have action steps that you can take. This is something that is within your control, meaning you don't control whether you're 
uh, terminated or the place closes up and everyone's laid off, but you have control over having a job, right? So we have to boil it down a little bit. You can work at finding other positions, or if it is just competition in the place you're working, how can you shine more? How can you show your gifts? Maybe it's an even in a different department. Maybe you need to move around. But this actually calls on us to become creative and to look at our lives in a different manner than just going with the status quo, just going along and letting the powers that be uh, determine whether we have a job or not. Now, maybe you won't have that particular job, but you will have a job. It is something you have control over, whether you want to work in a particular place or want to do a particular kind of work. It isn't easy. And this adds, it adds stress in a different way. It's calling upon you to take action. So we want to remember that even though we may not like the situation, if we have control, we can eliminate some of the stress. We can eliminate the stress of someone above us having the choice as to whether we have a job or not. So taking action is a surefire way to defeat the stresses and the anxieties that we let fester and move us more toward the wormhole. There are plenty of situations in life that we can change with some effort. If we're concerned about our health, the good news is that you can change many aspects of it. You already know that having a healthy diet and regular exercise, doing meditation, all of those things that we talk about here, we know that those things can help us get rid of unhealthy behaviors and keep us in a better healthy state. Perfect health? Probably not. But we are eliminating the stress of this is being done to us by taking the steps to be proactive, to go forward, to be creative, and to not just let things happen to us. This takes us out of the victim mentality, which can lead us to despair and a lot of anxiety. So by determining the root, is this something that we can change or not? By determining that and developing ways to turn the situation into something positive, something that you can work proactively at, you can often overcome them and not only eliminate extra stress that can lead you down the wormhole, but actually make you feel better about yourself and know that you are taking steps to have your life go in the direction that you choose. So here are some tips and techniques that we can do to manage our anxiety. The first one is to grab those journals and jot down what your anxiety is about. Know your anxieties. Write down exactly what's causing you to feel stressed or anxious. And then note down the ways that you can change the outcome. What can you do to change the outcome? Knowing what you are up against is the key to feeling better about yourself and your current situation. The second one I want to remind you of is to breathe. Once we have pinpointed the things that we need to change, sitting back and taking a breath is really helpful. This is a form of relaxation. People say, I don't have time to relax. I don't have time to do all these things. Well, you're breathing anyway. You might as well make it a relaxed breath every once in a while. This form of relaxation can help you calm your racing heart and give you peace of mind. Rapid breathing, which is what we get into with stress and anxiety, can lead us into a panic attack. I have always said I could probably breathe myself in or out of a panic attack by just being consciously aware of my breathing. So don't let it get that far where you are breathing rapidly. 
We want to breathe deeply and slowly. These are our belly breaths, our Buddha breathing. And I always remind you the best way to get into that is to concentrate on your exhalation and let it be longer and slower than your inhalation. Then your inhale will go deeper as long as your belly is relaxed. And you can do this by choosing to take for yourself relaxed breath somewhere in your day. Find triggers that will help you remind yourself to do that, such as when you get in your car before you start the car, when you come home from work and you're changing your clothes, maybe when you are cooking. Find places in your life that can be just natural reminders of this is a time to take a relaxed breath. You'll be so much more peaceful for it. The third one I want to remind you of is visualization. Now, we don't talk a lot about visualization here, but it is very important. And it is another way to help deal with anxiety. And we can choose a quiet space, relax, close our eyes, sit relaxed as if we were going into our meditation. And instead of doing our meditation, we can imagine ourselves in an ideal situation. We can feel the calm that that ideal situation would bring to us. And we can visualize letting go of everything else. We can think about what we want and how we are actually there in our mind and be excited to be able to use our mind in that way and relaxing into it. Physically relaxing your muscles is very important in the visualization process. Think about how happy you'll be as you are in that place that you have wanted. Be in that in your visualization and let go of the stress as you let your muscles relax. Positive visualization can help you move toward a happier vision that you have created for yourself in your mind. The visualization will help you move actually toward that. So take some time, relax as if you were going into meditation and be where you want to be. Be there, actually be there in the visualization. And it will help you to let go of those stresses that keep us so bound up and tight because we are putting ourselves in a happy place. The fourth one I want to talk about is, again, using positive affirmations. We do talk about that in more depth on other podcasts. But when things get tough and you feel like you're losing control, pull up a positive affirmation or a mantra and say it over and over in your head. Use that uh, energy that you have with anxiety that tends toward wanting to ruminate and put it toward a positive thought instead of a negative, scary thought. So reaffirming positive thoughts repeatedly can help us all in believing that anything is possible. Because I want you to remember the power of your mind is endless. This very same mind that got you into the stress and anxiety cycle can bring you out of it. It is how we focus it and what direction we are putting our mind to. Another thing I want to mention briefly is diet and exercise. We all know that eating well and exercising physically can help us handle stress and anxiety. So don't forget it. Don't let it just be in your intellect. Actually put it to work. The stronger the body is, the stronger the mind is. In fact, if we are abusing our body with junk food and drugs and alcohol, your body and mind will react in a negative way. We are connected. These are not, our body is not separate from our mind and our mind can very much influence our body. So take good care of your body and it will help take care of those worries. 
And finally, seek support. Talk to someone who has been in the same situation as you that is no longer there. Reaching out to family and friends for support or seeking a professional to help you can do wonders for you to get rid of your anxiety because you get it yourself talking about it and out of your head. Join one of our groups if you're interested in that for daily support. Once you have seen that someone else has gone through and overcome what you're experiencing, you will have greater hope that you can do the same too, and this will help you to keep on track to do all these things that I have just talked about. Stress is a part of everyday life. How we choose to manage this stress is what will make the difference. Stop letting stress and anxiety control you. Take the reins and let the anxiety and worries know that you are the one in the driver's seat of your life and that you are going to focus on different thoughts and different ways to keep your nervous system in the parasympathetic state instead of the sympathetic, stressful, fight or flight state. We are going to move ourselves willfully by our actions and our thoughts to being more actively in our parasympathetic nervous system. I know you can do this and I look forward to hearing from you as you make your changes. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to put out a personal invitation to those of you who would like to take your healing and your clearing of your anxiety panic to another level. If you are not someone who wants to join a group coaching program, you may be interested in joining in with me on Coaching One-on-One. You can learn more about that at the website, anxietycoachespodcast.com, and go to the one-on-one coaching page. Feel free to send me an email, anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com, with coaching in the subject, and I'll be sure to get back with you, and we'll take it from there. No need to have this drag on forever. And now for today's quote. Every tomorrow has two handles. We can take hold of it with the handle of anxiety or the handle of faith. And that's from Henry Ward Beecher. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.